Welcome to Weekly Devotions, a ministry of the chaplains of the Bethany Group. I'm Pastor Kevin Schwartz, and I'm so glad you took some time to join us in worship and word together. In the Christian calendar, we've just entered the season of Lent, beginning with Ash Wednesday and the six weeks or 40 days, well, 40 not including the Sundays, to Easter. Lent is a very important time in the church. We watch in the Gospels the tight-knit community of Jesus and the twelve form and grow what it means to be faithful to the loving God. We see in Jesus the faithfulness we desire and the trust to practice it in good times and difficult times. Lenten is a time of deep reflection as we consider the desert places of our own lives and the practice and failure that meets us in our own quest in faithfulness to God, the God of love, peace, and justice. The Lenten season gives us time to remember our own humanity, a mortality, as we observe the lives of the Twelve who seek to be faithful followers of Jesus in a world not so much unlike our own. Welcome to Lent. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Saviour the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of god i shall prevail standing on the promises of god standing on the promises standing on the promises of god my savior standing on the promises I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing from Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for me be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your salvation and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, and therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right. 
teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his degree. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness and in the wilderness, he was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. When morning gilds the skies, my heart awaking cries, may Jesus Christ be praised, alike at work and prayer, to Jesus I repair, may Jesus Christ be A sadness fill my mind, a solace here I find. May Jesus Christ be praised. Or fades my earthly bliss, my comfort still is this. May Jesus Christ be praised. Ye nations of mankind, in this your conquered find, may Jesus Christ be praised. Let all the earth around ring joyous with the sound. May Jesus Christ be praised.
Shall we say the Apostles' Creed together as an affirmation of our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you remember the old TV show, Dragnet? And that famous line, maybe you just remember the famous line from it, from Sergeant Joe Friday, just the facts. Often when he was getting a little impatient with a, a witness, he'd reply, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. When we read Mark's gospel, we get a, a bit of a, a feeling of Mark is kind of a just the facts type of person. He's so brief and so to the point. In fact, he we don't even have a, a birth story in Mark's gospel. He hops right to when Jesus arrives on the scene and beginning his ministry when Jesus is 30. He covers the entire area of Jesus being tempted by the devil in just 33 words. And the spirit immediately drove him out in the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Luke takes 250 words to cover that same area. Just the facts. We might modernize the gospel reading. Summing it up something like this. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Time's up. It's time to get going. Some people are quite the procrastinators, aren't they? Maybe you know some. Maybe you are one. Like college students pulling those all-nighters to write term papers. I used to teach theology in a, at a college and you could always tell who had left things to the last moment. Or those pastors who leave their Sunday sermons to the very last minute. I had one colleague and friend in Saskatchewan and if I ever wanted to phone him on a Saturday evening, I was sure to phone the church because there he would be working laboriously on his sermon. We put things off. Procrastinators like that, when they hear time's up, it sends a chill down their spine. And I think of this sense of urgency. 
that sometimes we have and that we need to have. Sometimes the sense of urgency regarding the gospel has maybe moved to the back burner. Well, I mean, let's be fair. It's been 2,000 years and Jesus still hasn't come back. So maybe we'll just wait a little longer, we may think. But what are we waiting for? The instructions are so very clear. Love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. And the second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Simple, to the point. What are we waiting for? We say maybe we don't have enough time, but we've got all the time we need. We have today. And the time is right. The time is here. The time is now. The kingdom of God is near. Believe the good news. Live the good news. Amen. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of time. We thank you for your many blessings, and we thank you for your call that the time is now. I pray for each of my friends today. Lord Jesus, that we again are reminded that all things are in your hands. We can trust you. We can find peace and hope from you. We can rest in your goodness. May we know your provision and protection and your peace. You know the situations we're walking through and going through. And we invite your abiding hand to guide us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And together we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you today. May the Lord, who sets aside the former sayings, make space for the new and fashion us into worthy instruments of the peace and just our world needs. God be with you today. Amen. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. She is his new creation by water. He came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. Elect from every nation, yet one o'er all the earth, her charter. So